You have so much to do every day. You have immediate plans and are working towards bigger goals. Yet, you seem to continually have to deal with disturbances that may interrupt your day or even worse, significantly upset major plans. How are you supposed to respond? I'm Dennis Metzler and welcome to The Charge. Francois Fenelon was a French Roman Catholic archbishop, theologian, and author. He was born in 1651 and he left behind many personal letters written to noblewomen, including the following excerpt. Fenelon writes, As to daily matters which appertain to your duties or to providential arrangements, Although they may be inconvenient or distracting, you have only to endure them in peace. End quote. We all have things that we want to get done and things that we think should get done. This sense is especially heightened if it is considered kingdom work, those matters that the Spirit calls us to. We know how frustrating it can be when those routine matters of duty pile up but especially so when unseen situations arise that call for our attention and time. But there is no need for distractions or inconveniences to rob us of our peace or joy or of the sense of God's presence. Fenelon brings hope when he tells us we have to endure these interruptions in peace, implying that we can endure them in peace. Fenelon continues, Behind each importunate intruder, learn to see God governing all and training you in self-denial alike through a troublesome acquaintance as through good examples. End quote. Fenelon now guides us into a change of perspective which will be the foundation for achieving our hope of peace in the midst of any trial. We are to see the God of the universe using any and all of these intruders as a means of training us in obedience, humility, and surrender. We are to see God's hand in the things which obviously bless us, but just as much in those difficulties arising beyond our control, which seem intent on interfering with our good intentions. The key here is self-denial. Are we more interested in the ways of the Spirit or in furthering our own purposes, even those which seem most noble? The more we pursue self-denial, the more clearly we see how easily we elevate our own plans over the needs of others. Fenelon elaborates further. The intruder whom God sends us serves us to thwart our will, upset our plans, to make us crave more earnestly for silence and recollection, to teach us to sit loose of our own arrangements, our rest, our ease, our taste, to bend our will to that of others, to humble ourselves when impatience overcomes us under these annoyances, and to kindle in our hearts a greater thirst for God, even while he seems to be forsaking us because we are so disturbed. End quote. This seems counterintuitive. Shouldn't God be the one who is orchestrating our days so things go smoothly and we can get done all we want or at least need to do? Shouldn't the Spirit only send people to us if they are going to assist us in our scheduled tasks? But Fenelon is going way deeper than this. He cares about discipleship and profound transformation. Perhaps God is more concerned with our maturity in Christ than he is with us achieving our goals. Apparently, God wants us to be disturbed in order to get us to crave solitude in Christ that much more. According to Fenelon, God wants us to sit loose of our own notions of rest and relaxation. But the next part is even more challenging. He wants to bend our will to that of others. Isn't the goal of life to be your own boss in all areas of life? Paul, in Ephesians 5, calls us to submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. 
Without mutual submission, we can't live as brothers and sisters in Christ. Without the willingness to give up our own ideas, goals, plans, and desires, we can't be the body of Christ. Of course, we must guard against collectivist tendencies to dominate the individual. Still, the frustrations that we experience as we relate to each other and the world are quite real. But God is not distant from us in this, though we might not experience the wonder of his presence. He is glad to bring us trials in order to create a fervent desire for him and a zeal to do his will. Fenelon continues the letter. Whatever comes from God's hand bears good fruit. Often those things which make you sigh after solitude are more profitable for your humiliation and self-denial than the most utter solitude would be. End quote. Here, humiliation does not refer to being humiliated, but of being humbled. So, we might agree that these trials are valuable because they cause us to seek God that much more. But, the idea that the trials that lead us to solitude are more valuable than the solitude itself sounds like it is going too far. However, there is no strength without strain, and the bliss of solitude may in fact seduce us towards regrettable pleasures. Remember, Fenelon's aim is Christ-likeness, humility, and self-denial, not helping people accomplish their personal and career goals. We need to trust that personal and career goals will be satisfied in God's way as we grow in true Christian maturity. Click here for part two.